understanding love and how it affects the rest of your life, even your finances. You'll find out in this episode. We're back with Broke to Woke, episode 13. Brittany Faith Turner, Jeremy Alexander Newsom. That's me. I have a question for you. Okay, hit me. So we just talked about how I came to the realization of learning that God is love. Mm -hmm. That wasn't always understood. Of course, it's understood in your mind, but it's not understood in your heart. Do you currently believe that God is love? If so, how did you come to that realization or not? Thank you for asking that. I was having a conversation yesterday with a gentleman who gets migraines a lot. Hmm. I was on the phone with him and the most random like interjection came into my mind. I used to get migraines all the time. I was trying to figure out why. Why do I get migraines so much? Or why did I get migraines so much? Because we're talking like 11, 12, 13. And I'm definitely no doctor. I'm no medical expert. But I can say this. I do think... It all went away. I started having and developing a better relationship with God. And Hmm. most specifically, it's because I was repressing who I am internally. I was shoving down all of my greatness deep down inside and just kept everything hidden, clutched up, and held from the world. That was the religion I was a part of. It was a very repressive, very scarcity mindset, very fearful religion and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses teach that you need to be a death, deathly afraid of God, right? God's the exactly opposite of love. So they don't say God is love? Like do they, they do. skip that one? They, they love to just, it's just a really quick. They say it, but they don't like. Yeah. God's love, but he kind of hates you. <laughs> Trying to get you at the yeah, same time. That's right. God's really loving. If you do all of these things every day appropriately, It's really make sure you're following these rules. And I think you were one of the first people to either say or admit this phrase that you were mad at God. And this was one of our first interactions on the island. I heard you say this. I was like, you can do that? You can be mad at what? Is that allowed? (laughs) Really? That's a thing? That's recent. Yeah. That's been in the last two yeah, years. Yeah, two years. Yeah. It's, it was a recent me, for me to understand that not only can you do that, not only can you do that, but you are, are also allowed to forgive God for the things that he presented to you. We have talked about that here. And we have talked about that here as well. And that was something when we had a forgiveness episode, episode or exercise, I was thinking to myself, well, why would I do that? Am I allowed to do that? And there was so many repressional fears that were coming up about my past and about the things I experienced. And the world is going to end in the largest genocide Mm -hmm. in the history of the cosmos any day now. Jesus is going to come down and smite billions of people instantly if they are not of this particular religion. Wait, real quick question. Would they then be considered smote? (laughs) You know, you probably, probably because that was, that was the thing, right? Like that's what they believe. That's the witness religion. I mean, it is death any second yeah. by the multitude of the world, right? No love in that. So for me to understand that God is love did take a long time and it took a lot of inner forgiveness and it took a lot of realization and work. But when I began to realize that all things are created through this energy of love and that love is all encompassing and it's all powerful and there is no dictatorial or negative energy that can resist or abide or live inside of love. Mm. That for me was a huge compelling belief because now I get to root my life and my energy and my purpose through this loving center that is inside each and every single person because we are created in that image, the image and the all-encompassing light of love. Mm. And I would say in the last two to three years, that has been probably my number one largest change in my entire body chemistry. 
And how has your net worth changed? Would you say it's doubled, tripled since understanding that? It's very strange that you asked that question. Because I would say it's at least 20x. 20x? 20x. Well, I mean, that is when, since you met me and started hanging out with weird people. No, uh, but, but it's seriously, weird. it is. It's, yeah, it is. It's when the reason I asked that question, are we talking about money? We have to a little bit. But we haven't been talking but about we money. Been. We're talking about literally your understanding mm -hmm. of God. Sure. But his net worth 20x when he realized that God is for you, he's not out to sabotage you. He's not out to destroy everything you're trying to do and therefore you're walking this tightrope waiting for the cosmos to to lightning bolt you off yes. the road in an icy fire yeah. car accident. You know, yeah. like, golly. Yes. <laughs> like, Pretty, yes. But that, it's so weird when you believe he's for you, you get to experience those blessings. That's a revelation I hope for hundreds of thousands of people listening to this. Look Maybe at the millions. ripple effect of understanding God yes. and who he is. Like, it's really interesting. Yes. And that was a very heavy, heavy moment for me as as having that not only realization, but also the awakening to that that's who we are, right? That representation, that embodiment of love. Mm. Because now you can have a really, really beautiful alignment with every purpose and every action that you take can be done out of either love or fear. Mm. And if it's not in love, it is in fear. And you get to know what that feels like because it's the antithesis of you. It's really weird that there's so much fear indoctrinated in certain religions, especially when they're supposed to be promoting faith because faith and fear are opposites. Mm, and polar. It's all about mm. walking in faith, walking in faith. But fear is the opposite of faith, but it's so much fear instilled. So as a nice filter, you know, everybody in here, we're going to get some haters from this one. It's okay. To the haters. Yeah. They hate us because they ain't us. They hate us. Whatever. We're going to get some <laughs> haters because everybody believes different things. Sure. And I'm just going to say, if you do believe God is love, then it's nice to use some filters of mm. understanding. If some massive amount of fear is being thrown on you, is that love? Is that faith? Is that abundance? I came to give life and life more abundantly. Like, is that... It, you have to... There's a big difference between like knowing God and religion. It really is. And religion, oh man, we're getting, we're going Let's off go. here. We're going Let's off go. here. Religion is rules. Religion is bars. Religion is cages. It's it's not love. And you can see it throughout the world and what it's caused in the wars that have been created and the people who oppress just based on blah, 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 blah. But, you know, the, the, I know that there's like the Ten Commandments. And when I was younger, I was mad at my dad one time in high school. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets mad yeah, at their course. parent in high school. Not. I was mad at him for – he he would like be upset at me for leaving my dishes out every morning because I would work till three or four in the morning uh, as a waitress and then get up and go to school at six. And I was always running late. It's who I am as well as I was really tired. And he would be upset that I'd leave my dishes in the sink. And I was mad and I wanted to do something bad. Mm -hmm. I did. I was like, you know what? If you're going to treat me like a bad kid, I'm going to be a bad kid. <laughs> and I thought I was <laughs> like literally face. going through the list of bad things uh. I could do. But for some reason, this is like the moment I like got to know God on my own. I thought of all the things God told us not to do. And then I looked at all the other high schoolers that were doing those things. And I was like, man, they have so many problems. Mm -hmm. They have so much baggage. And I was like, I think God told us not to do that so that we just don't have more problems. Mm -hmm. And it clicked. It was like, it's the wise words of mm -hmm. Michael Scott. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> I pretty much think that's the point of the Ten Commandments. If you really think about all the little things God tells us not to do, they're things that create pain. So, again, if somebody gets freaking weird and oppressive, and like that's why you just have to know God and light and get that guidance on your own, have that relationship because every single person has a different calling. And it's just important to know that life giving source on your own. Bring it home. Yes, that's amazing. 
I ended up not doing the bad thing, just for the record, because it didn't make sense to do it. Yeah. <laughs> a logical 13-year-old. <laughs> right. You, you've pulled out logic out of that, and that's incredible. Um, I love how you mentioned the word abundance. And in future episodes, we're going to talk a little bit about a move that you had from courage to abundance and what mm, that looks like. I did. Um, both physical and internal. And I think that's going to be a really interesting discussion. But for a future episode, so right now, I love the distinction that you mentioned, religion is rules. Mm -hmm. And that oppressiveness, I think, is truly a, I think oppression is a man-made structure, Mm. right? Interesting. This is a man-made structure uh, because, again, going back to this, and we're going to talk a lot about this in this episode, but this loving creation Oppression does not have to live in love. The the real art of abundance is a non-egotistical allowing of freedom and prosperity in all aspects. And I think love is a characteristic of abundance. And so there's a beautiful flavor to that where you can mend and decide and create. And again, my friends, this is all a mindset. This is all a tweak and adjustment that Brittany and I are figuring out day by day. We're working through it. We're, We're learning. This is truly a recorded conversation of two friends going, how can we better the world and take our current understanding of what we know and provide it to someone else so they can get and start skipping levels. And all of these messages are sponsored by pain. <laughs> pain. We've learned it, and hopefully you don't have to go through what we did. <laughs> 1,000 years of pain and oppression. You're welcome. <laughs> Summarized in these five steps. <laughs> right. It's totally true. And for me, uh, just the the understanding of this has has been absolutely monumental, and I want everyone to understand that this episode I will listen to myself numerous times, and I want each and every one of you to do the exact same, because the awakening moment that you can truly realize that your spirit is only internalizing either love or fear, Ooh. and if you are acting out in something, it's one of those two things, and you get to determine which one it is. Mm. Every day, every action, every hug, every smile, right? It can be a fear-based or a love-based one. And you get to pick every single day, my friend. So when you make that determination, consciously or unconsciously, the lifting and the weight that is removed from your soul Mm -hmm. and the freedom and the energy that you will have in that moment and in those moments can last for lifetimes. That's really the elevation of your life. I mean, just in the the few years that I've known you now, I don't even know how many years has it been. It's been a while. It's two? coming up on a while. Two? It's coming up on two. <laughs> two. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> the two years that I've known you. I mean, your joy has gone through the roof. Yeah. You've always been a jolly guy. Jolly dude, I have. But you can be yeah. jolly and like have a bunch of like vices or you can sure. be jolly and like truly walking in. 100%. Your kingship, you know. And so seeing your relationships, your impact, your following, your net worth, like your walking in abundance, how we've been able to fund so many projects all like literally from heart transplants to Ukraine crisis responses and rescue missions, like I've been able to watch you just what I would call come into alignment. But that's because your life's elevated because of a different understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's why we talk through these micro changes Mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything, if I could summarize what we share, 90% of what we share, it would be perspective. Right. A different way to view the same life. That's it. Creates a different life experience. Entirely. Entirely. And I love that word elevation. Fun fact, I will never use the term next level again i've changed it to elevate Mm. right so for all my marketing fans out there next level is overplayed just go and stop using that oh so is elevate so now we're using transcend oh 
Oh, you told him the secret? I Shoot, did. you guys got a free secret. You're <laughs> welcome. That is a multi million dollar secret. Both of us <laughs> had, we were having an Tell intention setting on the beach. And it was the first morning story. of a summit. Yep. And uh, very powerful. Summit. It was the G Force Summit the launch heavy. retreat. And we we're sitting down there and we were in the Peace TP mm -hmm. on the island. In the Peace TP on, on the there. beach. Yep. And we're all sitting there and we did the in what's our intention for the year? What's our intention for the week? And you have to sit there and listen and see what word comes into your spirit. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, both Jay Money and myself got the same exact word. And I was like, wow, I never, ever. Ever. Kind of a freaking weird word. I'm like creeped out by it until I Googled it and I was like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It's not weird. It's not weird. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was weird, but it's just not in my vocabulary to have dropped into my spirit like that. So it was really interesting. We got the exact same word. Same, same day. Like the intention of the, not the week though, the year. Mm -hmm. And I made a craft out of it. And by the way, my friends, I want you to know there's some very transcendent information, clips, audio that's coming out from Brittany Turner over there in the next few years and months. Just continue to wait because we are doing that. That's what our goal is this year is to elevate into a transcendingly beautiful orchestra of abundance. And we're going to continue doing that in the next episodes. We'll see you there.